Ya subhai ya pi baro ki para lok ki ba. Ya ke ne ka program ki tongi na opet ngo ki ban ni. Ka program ka ba kerpang ka ban chuan lam ka pi mang la ka snem ha ka ba kut jong ka snem atan. Te men ta ka snem ni so ka nat chibun ba ngi yo ba no lam chi pi ya ke ne ka program walk the talk show ha ka ba ngi yo ba ya kran ba o men te rang ba jong ke jalam ka lia jong ni u kon ra ke sangma. Ni so ta nat chibun ba ha ke ne ka cheng kran ngi yo sngo ya ki e ki cheng khmu ki ba ka sor ka ka don ban le na ka ban ta ban wan ra ya ka roi ka par ba ka jing ki sha phrang ha ka chan la jong ni ba kum jo ru ya ki thong ki ba phun ba ka nek sor ka ha po ka cheng alam jong min ti rang ba ka kwa ban pin dap ha po jong ke ni ka snem ha ka ba ki dang don ha ka bor jong ki cheng sin sha te tong ni ya pen ya ka nek program ta We have with us our Honorable Chief Minister Sri Konrad K. Sangma, who has kindly consented to be with us on this show. So let us start the program straight away, sir. First of all, the question I would like to you is: The CAG has reported recently that there is a steep rise in the government's uh, loan borrowing by 63 percent. No. So how is uh, this? Is it not worrying the financial condition of the state? Uh, you see, uh, every state uh, is permitted to borrow a certain level by the uh, central government, uh, and there are caps that are put on the borrowing. Okay. So no state can borrow beyond a certain limit. Uh, the funds uh, under the borrowing are meant to be borrowed so that we can invest and uh, you know increase the overall infrastructure and other spendings in the state. Yes. So therefore, uh, no state is allowed to go beyond. A certain point, which would then put them in a difficult position in the coming years. Meghalaya has remained within the limits, and within whatever prescribed limits, we have tried to work and get as much funds as possible. And uh, it is because of this particular work that we're doing that uh, our spending has gone up from uh, 9,000 crores in 2017 mm. to today at 22,000 crores. So we have more than doubled our spending, and you'll be happy to know. that most of the spending that we are doing is actually in infrastructure and in investment okay. so our investment and infrastructure and capital expenditure as we call it has gone up to almost touching to 10000 crores so therefore this is all going into roads into buildings mm -hmm. things that are more of investment and i'm sure that we will see the returns of this uh, in the years to come okay thank you so much for that now what about this uh, problem now which is going up in the state in which we see many of the youth Of the state, they are into drugs. So, how are we going to address this problem, sir? Drugs is a major issue uh, in uh, our state and in the region, and the country as a whole. A uh, few of the reasons why we face this problem is because we are very close to what we call the golden uh, triangle, where the supply of the drugs uh, is uh, uh, very close to the region of the northeast. Yes. Uh, at the same time, uh, there was a point where the northeast was more of a transit. into the rest of the country but yes. today uh, the consumption also is uh, is happening out here uh, now keeping all those factors in mind what is important to remember is that this is a social issue and hence uh, we need to uh, involve all the stakeholders yes. in trying to figure out how to resolve this problem from the government side there have to be certain policies uh, we have to ensure that the police are very very aggressive and uh, you know and uh, make sure that they catch the people who are involved in it which has been happening in the past 3 to 4 years very aggressively uh, you'll be surprised to know that uh, almost uh, drugs worth almost 300 plus crores have been seized by the by the police in the last 3 uh, years itself uh, that shows the kind of active work that the police is doing but while the police are working there is a lot we need to do as a society also and that's why we have come out with a program called dream which is a project that is uh, meant to not only look at the police action mm -hmm. but also involve society as a whole okay. in trying to find out how we could as a community mm -hmm. help in the rehabilitation process uh, help in also ensuring that uh, the people who uh, were in drugs how they can be now brought into the mainstream back again mm -hmm. uh, so a government has has started this large scale project where we will now look at different rehabilitation centers okay. and we will also look at community participation 
Recently, in fact, we had a program with uh, the Maulai Dorbar, where uh, along with the Dorbar, we have uh, uh, given help and support to many uh, people who were into drugs. Uh, and now uh, a social reform is taking place. And this is happening with the help of the Dorbar. So it's a, it's a, as I said, it's a problem where all the stakeholders we all need to work together, be it the government, be it NGOs, or be it the society in the community to resolve this problem of drug menace. So is, is the state or the government uh, planning to set up um, its own rehabilitation center? Uh, wherever we will not find NGOs who are um, uh, willing to come forward and uh, setting it up, government will do it. Yes. But we feel that uh, uh, if the society and NGOs can take uh, the lead, and government funds them and supports them financially, yes. uh, it is a more sustainable model. Mm -hmm. And hence, uh, we are encouraging different NGOs and societies and groups who are uh, you know, already involved in this okay. to take up more uh, initiative and uh, government of Meghalaya will uh, give them sufficient funds to run. Okay, that's very nice to hear from your part. Then what about the infrastructural developments that the government has taken till now, sir? Can you please tell us? Uh, as I mentioned to you, there is a large number. I don't think uh, we'll have enough time to yes, go into yes. all of them. Uh, but, um, you know, we have seen that uh, the money that has been spent in the last uh, five years uh, in the infrastructural and the capital investment, as we call it, yes has almost tripled so where uh, at one point in time we were spending roughly about 2500 to 3000 crores a year mm. on infrastructural development today with the help of central government the different taxes and externally aided projects yes. today Meghalaya roughly spends about 8500 crores on capital investment on infrastructural development so there's a huge impetus on that just to give you an idea so Meghalaya has approximately 11,000 kilometers of roads, yes. uh, constructed roads uh, in the last 50 years. And now out of this 11,000 kilometers of roads, mm -hmm. uh, 3,500 were constructed in the last five years. Okay. So you can say almost 30% of the roads in the history of Meghalaya mm -hmm. were constructed in the last five years itself. So uh, we have touched, uh, as I said, almost 4,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, in PMGSY alone, we did, uh, uh, it was at 1,600. And today we are at 4,000 plus kilometers. Uh, so really, uh, if you see the road infrastructure, we have seen a huge uh, improvement and investment. As I said, 30% of the roads in Meghalaya have been constructed in the last five years. Uh, apart from that, if you look at all the uh, water connections, 99% of the water connections in the rural areas have been given in the last four years. You know, so uh, in the last 50 years, there were only 4,500 houses that received water through pipe connection yes. in rural areas. Today, we are almost touching 5 lakh houses uh, that have been given uh, water connection through uh, the JJM program. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, if you look at uh, our other projects, uh, you know, where schools, for example, uh, government schools which had not been repaired or had not been constructed or not been um, uh, supported or, uh, you know, uh, were in dilapidated condition mm. for the last 30 40 years uh, government of megala in the last five years we have either constructed a new building mm. or we have done major repair in all the 2500 government lp schools mm. so like that in almost every sector we have seen a huge amount of investment mm. and it is reflected in the overall as i said capital expenditure of the state going up almost uh, triple compared to what it was in 2017. Okay, that was very nice to hear about the infrastructural developments that your government has taken. Now, what about the healthcare infrastructure, sir? We still see that many of the hospitals, especially the government hospitals, are still in need of yes. many infrastructures. So yes, what is absolutely. the uh, plan of the government for this? Uh, so you'll be again happy to know that uh, in terms of the percentage that uh, a state government spends uh, on healthcare mm -hmm. uh, in ratio to its entire budget, yes. Megala is the highest spender in the country today. So yes. we spend more than 8% of our budget mm -hmm. for healthcare, and that is number one in the country today. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is being done precisely because of the reason you mentioned that 
healthcare requires special attention. Yes. And uh, we've realized this and that's why uh, through a very, very large project uh, funded through World Bank, mm. uh, we have been able to repair large number of PHCs, CHCs and sub-centers and uh, almost all of them are going uh, through, you know, major uh, repair work and renovation work. Yes. Apart from that, I have come up with a special mission in the last uh, three months nice to, to, yeah, to, to really renovate the three uh, main civil hospitals, which is Shillong, Tura and Jawai Hospital. Okay. So we will be uh, ensuring and spending enough money to give them sufficient manpower, mm -hmm. number one, which is, I think, the most critical part. Yes. Uh, we also want to ensure that the infrastructure is in good shape. So we are spending enough to create the infrastructure, mm -hmm. the power backup supply, which is again a major issue. Yes. We're investing in those also. And we are investing in the equipments that uh, are required in these hospitals so that at least these three major hospitals could become regional referral centers. And uh, you will see in the next uh, three to four months, a massive change, especially in Shillong, Jawai and Tura uh, civil hospitals, where all these transformations uh, will take place. Apart from that, you will also be happy to know that uh, there was a huge shortage of doctors. And uh, we realized that uh, though MPSC uh, has been working very hard, but because of so many posts and so many different interviews, uh, things were not moving at the pace uh, which was required. So we came up with our own um, health recruitment board. And uh, with the help of the health recruitment board today, in the matter of three months time, we were able to recruit 500 doctors. And, and, and we will be doing the same thing for nurses, for uh, paramedical staff, mm. for technicians. So I do see and I do hope that in the coming six months to 12 months, mm. we will see that most of the requirement for uh, the health workers and uh, the different uh, medical staff uh, should be taken care of and we'll have enough people working in the health okay. sector. That's a good news to hear about the healthcare developments that the government has taken. Now, something about a very critical problem is that, you know, the, the government has started the scientific method of mining and yes. all that. But still, we can see there are so much of concerns regarding mining and transportation of coal. So how do you react to such issues? See, first thing, uh, one has to realize the uh, history of mining in our state. Yes. And uh, traditionally, we all know that the mines, the land and its resources belong to the owner and to the community yes. and to the people. That's the uniqueness of our state. And based on that, for the last century or couple of centuries, people have been mining in the way they used to mine, you know, before, which is the rat hole mining or the tunnel mining, as we call it. And uh, we would see that uh, in this entire process, uh, there was no issue before yes. 2014. Mm. Uh, but of course, then NGT came in and they said, well, what is happening is not correct. And they suddenly banned the uh, mining that was taking place. And uh, people's livelihood was, was affected. Uh, what we need to realize is that while we are trying to change the way things are done, you cannot just simply cut it off. You need to create a parallel system or you need to allow the people to transition into the new process and new method. Now, which was not allowed in the past. In 2014, the ban came in and everything just suddenly stopped. There are lakhs of families who are involved in mining, lakhs of families who are affected by the business uh, in mining directly or indirectly. And hence, uh, it was a very difficult position for the state as well as for the people. Now, we went ahead and we challenged this mining ban that was done. And the Supreme Court upheld it and uh, we were uh, the ban was lifted mm -hmm. but it put a condition that it has to be done scientifically okay. now what is uh, the good news for us is that there are many miners who have applied mm -hmm. following the proper procedure okay. and we are now i have just received the information in fact yesterday mm -hmm. that the last part which is the mining plans to be approved has also been done for four of the miners mm -hmm. and we expect that uh, within the next couple of months, we'll actually be able to see the real uh, official and scientific mining taking yes. place in the state. So the equipments also are being ordered by those miners. I took a recent report of it that uh, already investments are being done uh, in machinery and they are on their way. And as I said, uh, following procedure, uh, we expect that uh, scientific mining 
will start in the next couple of months is what we expect. Of course, uh, it all depends on the miners, but from the government side now, all the paperwork is clear. Okay, then we have also heard some the news that there's still illegal trans uh, mining and illegal transportation of coal is going on. So how do you address this? Uh, you see, we have to understand, which I was telling you in the beginning, that this is what the people have been doing for a very long time. Yes. Which means that not the illegal mining, but mining, which used to be illegal before, but then 2014 onward, it was made illegal. So people have been doing it before and suddenly you come and tell people you can't do it. Uh, economically, it is a challenge for the people. Yes, and also for the government to now suddenly go and tell everybody, stop what you were doing in the last 100 years, 200 years. Uh, is not that simple. Uh, so therefore, uh, if you look at it, thousands and thousands of cases have been uh, registered. Many people have been picked up. Many actions have been taken against people. But it is an economic livelihood of the people. And hence, for us to be able to completely just cut it off and tell people that you can't do it is a major challenge. Uh, so therefore, it's a process, it's a transition. Wherever we get such reports, whenever we get such complaints, we, we react to it and we take necessary action in it. Mm. But as I said, when it comes to the practical side of livelihood of the people, yes. uh, it is in a way very challenging mm. for anybody to snatch away that livelihood, which True. prior to 2014 was okay. And suddenly after 2014, you tell somebody that it's not okay. So, uh, and that's the reason why I mentioned that in any kind of these kind of programs, mm. you have to give the transition process time. So what should have been done is that they should have said that, well, this is not correct, the mining method. Transit. In the next five to ten years, mm. you completely come out of, uh, you know, of rat hole mining yes. and adopt uh, scientific mining. And mm. that would have given enough opportunity to people to then transit. Yes. Uh, and I think that was uh, one way it should have been dealt at that point in time. But, well, it's over now. Mm. And now we are at the phase where we'll be able to actually start the scientific mining. A person can get infected with HIV through unprotected sex with an infected partner, sharing of needles with an infected person, transmission from infected mother to fetus and from infected blood products. You can prevent yourself from contracting HIV or AIDS. Be faithful to your partner. Use condom for safe sex. Use only HIV screen blood or blood products. Do not share needles, syringes, blades, razors, etc. Visit your nearest integrated counseling and testing center to know your status. Protect yourself and your loved ones. To know more on HIV or AIDS, call toll free number 1097. Know your status. Be educated about AIDS. Issued in public interest by the Meghalaya AIDS Control Society.
Undon jing AAA no nangi. Isu pun biang kikot kisla. Buat nang tang sesopit ikli kikot kisla. Buat hadin nang ta ilayok pat saya kapisah kelapa saya kabang agam jongi. Okay, so then in the last budget, you have laid a roadmap of uh, Megalia uh, and it's that it will become a $10 billion economy, you know, raise up That's by right. 2027 up to 20, by 2027, 28. That's so right. what are the series of policies you are planning to take up for this? Absolutely correct. Uh, what is important, uh, again, to remember is that uh, uh, for any nation, for any state, uh, in fact, for any organization, we need to have a goal in mind. Yes. And uh, I have strongly felt that uh, whatever that goal, sh it should be something that should be, you know, uh, right up there. And it should push every single individual in the state, mm -hmm. every single political leader, every single officer to strive and work hard to achieve that goal. And our purpose was really to put that perspective in place and really give a target to somebody and the team and saying, look, let us try and double our economy. Let us try to reach from today a 45,000 crore economy to a 90,000 crore economy yes. in the next five years. Is it possible or not? Well, absolutely it is possible. We can do it if we move forward aggressively. Is it tough? Yes, it is tough. It's not easy. But then we should try to make it tough so that we're able to really push things hard. So therefore, 10 billion is a very steep target. It requires close to about 13% to 14% of growth every year. And this can only be possible when we are able to take all the different sectors and all the areas which you know need to contribute towards the GDP growth in a positive manner. So what we mean by that is, for example, there has to be a strategy towards how the primary sector, which is agriculture. Okay. So what do we do with agriculture? How do we increase the farmer's income out there? Yes. So we have a strategy for that. We have worked out of different programs. For example, we have uh, started focusing on high-end products. Mm. We started focusing on products that uh, we are good at, for example, uh, which have got high value, like the lakadong, like the spices we have, okay. like, you know, like akasi mandarin, uh, and so on and so forth, mushrooms, yes. uh, honey, so these kind of products have got high value. Can we shift or can we allow the farmers to have that additional you know, growth by ensuring that we're able to do more in, in these different uh, products? Yes, yes. And therefore, we have started putting up processing plants. We have started giving mission mode programs. We have started doing entrepreneurship to support these farmers. We have started helping the farmers individually by forming producer groups. So, so on and so forth for the farming, which is the primary sector, yes. we have got a strategy. Mm -hmm. Similarly, for the service sector, you know, in the service sector, which is mainly tourism mm -hmm. uh, areas and even BPOs and others, uh, these are areas where we can again grow in a very, very uh, exponential way. And hence, you will see that uh, in the last uh, five years, two five star hotels have come up in Shillong, yes. where we didn't have a single one in the last 45 years. And my target is that in the next five years, uh, of this particular term that we hope that we'll be able to add another three to five five-star hotels more uh, before the end of this term we should be able to open and many many more uh, homestays and other uh, you know localized accommodation mm. so uh, so service sector will grow we are promoting tourism uh, uh, by ensuring that we have got tour operators who are there we are promoting uh, it by having different festivals and programs that are there so you are seeing that we are doing all our programs and plans to push the, uh, the service sector also. At the same time, government spending has to go up, yes. which we have seen. Mm -hmm. So government spending going up will again add uh, you know, to the GDP. We need externally uh, you know, um, investments coming in. That's a major part of the GDP growth. And hence, we are coming out with a very, very lucrative industrial policy and a very lucrative IT policy and a very lucrative tourism policy. This is being done to ensure that we get a lot of investment in the state when it comes to hotels, whether it comes to BPOs, whether it comes to real estate uh, development and investment and different industrial development also. So these policies will promote uh, investment at a large scale. 
Another very important factor to that is the exports. So we realize that uh, the more we export to states like countries like Bangladesh, that is going to obviously push our GDP up. So hence it is important to then ensure that our infrastructure, our policies, our uh, manpower and all the uh, external linkages with Bangladesh also improve so that we are able to increase our exports. So in a nutshell, uh, there are different strategies for different sections and uh, it is only when all of this comes together and moves forward will we be able to achieve this target. Again, I repeat myself that uh, it is a very steep target, but it is important that we push ourselves. It's not, um, uh, I don't feel it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's easy to just simply put a small target and just achieve it. Let's, let's, let's push ourselves and let's try to achieve uh, the target that we have set. Yes, yes. So we hope this dream of the government will come true by 2027-28. Now, sir, the next part is that, you know, we have seen, that we have heard that uh, the state of Meghalaya has emerged as the fastest growing state in entrepreneurship. Yes. So how are you going to push up this entrepreneurship in our state? Uh, we have to remember and realize that the real growth of an economy uh, is not based on just government uh, policy and uh, or just based on government spending and government programs. Yes. If an economy has to grow and if the economy has to be sustainable and if the economy has to be, you know, uh, equal, mm. we need entrepreneurs uh, to push it. Entrepreneurs are the ones who will push the economy. And this has been our mantra from the beginning, from 2018. Yes. So we started a program called Prime. This prime program was meant to handhold, was meant to train, was meant to help the uh, entrepreneurs get financial support. And uh, you'll be happy to know that under the prime program, we have been able to support and handhold more than 3000 entrepreneurs in the last five years. And, um, uh, you know, large amount of funds have been given to them and large amount of training has been given to them. Now, the next step to uh, push it, and that's the reason why the entrepreneurship has grown so much in the last five years. But our next target is now to exponentially make that grow. So our new program called CM Elevate is maybe one of the most, the one, yes, uh, it's one of the most progressive, I should say, schemes and programs anywhere in the country for entrepreneurship. For example, through this program, we will be supporting more than 20,000 entrepreneurs where we intend to give them subsidy and give them grants. So while they are planning to open up their project, they apply. And anything between 35% to 75% of the subsidy yes. uh, or grant will be given by government of Meghalaya. And then we will further help them to tie up with banks to get interest-free loans okay. and, uh, and government will again support them. So all these programs are being done. And CM Elevate is a very, very unique and a very, very promising program. And uh, I really encourage the youth to take, uh, take this opportunity. You'll be happy to know that uh, since we've opened up our yes. portal for the CM Elevate, uh, we have received already 30,000 applications oh, under CM Elevate. Okay. So it's a really good news. It shows the enthusiasm in the, in the youth. Yes. And, and, so and will be employed also, you know? And they will be employers, yes. rather. They will create jobs. Yes. And uh, they will be able to then, uh, you know, uh, we expect that at least a minimum of 50,000 to even as high as one lakh jobs may be created uh, by this particular push that the government is doing. Okay. That's very nice. We have heard a lot about the, what the government is doing, what it's planning to do. No, sir, all these, we have the positive uh, idea that the government will move on forward with so much of developments. So what is the secret of this uh, succeeding in a coalition government for these two success terms? <laughs> uh, there is no real, uh, I don't know whether it's successful is not the word I would like to uh, use because uh, it's a process, uh, it's really a challenge, uh, you know, and uh, there's a lot of, lot of uh, work it's involved in it. Uh, but if you ask me a uh, few things, I think uh, it starts with trust among the coalition partners is very important. I think it's important to be transparent among the partners. Uh, you know, they should not feel that we are not involving them in some decision making or we should not feel, they should not feel that we are being unfair in every way. I cannot be fair all the time to everybody. Yes. Somewhere we have to help somebody else or support somebody else. And coalitions will always have that friction inside. Yes. But I think 
on an average, we should try to balance things. We should uh, ensure that our word matters and the trust should be there. And uh, I think principles are important in a coalition. One, uh, once a principle is there, then the principle applies to everybody. Yes. So whether you're party A or party B or party C, C. then uh, you know, we all know that, look, this is the principle mm -hmm. and it applies to party A and B and C all. So then when that happens, then people see it as being fair. Uh, and that's what we've been trying to do. We have faced many challenges in the last six years, very difficult situations. But I do take this opportunity to really thank our coalition partners. Uh, you know, I, you will see that in the last uh, elections also, uh, we fought against each other. Yes. But I tried to keep my word and I tried to keep that trust between us by not leaving anybody out. Yes. So in spite of the situation where we had a prob uh, where we were having certain problems while for government formation in the last, uh, before, I mean, during the election, after the election, uh, once things started settling down, I reached out to our uh, old partners. I told them that we are, our, we are family, we've worked together, we've been through yes. difficult times together. We not, may not agree on everything, mm -hmm. but let us keep that family and that bonding and that desire to work for the people and serve the people together. And I think that has helped to a large extent. Yes. So the trust is one of the best quality that you have shown throughout these years working together with uh, different parties of the state. So thank you for that. We know that you really put your trust on them. So now, sir, moving on, we, have, we are very well aware that your father is really a political legacy here in our state. So what makes you also believe as an individual in politics? Well, I started politics at a very young age. Uh, I started campaigning along with him uh, when I was 12 years old. And I, re I remember giving my first speech uh, to a public meeting because uh, uh, he could not reach on time to that location. So the people just forced me uh, that you say something and I was 12 years old. Uh, so that was my first public appearance, uh, though it was a very bad one. Uh, I didn't speak too well, but uh, that's how early it goes. But from a young age, uh, I've always seen my father, uh, you know, interact with people, the care that he showed to the mm. people, the kind of bonding that he had with yes, them. Yes. Uh, so that has really motivated me to, to also follow in his footsteps. And he always used to tell us a few things, which at that point when he was uh, alive, uh, we didn't think too much about it. But now that he's not here with us anymore, mm. you know, uh, those words keep coming, you know, to my mind and to my heart. And, uh, you know, some of them being, uh, you know, that Conrad, even if you're in politics, don't ever run after position, don't ever after run after money. Just serve the people, work for the people, be, you know, be focused on trying to help the people. If you do that in politics, if it, that is what drives you in politics, you will do the right thing and people will help you. Lord, God will bless you with position. God will bless you with all the blessings. So that always remains in my heart until today. That is what motivates me in politics, where um, you know I do whatever I can to help the people. I have told people that I work with passion uh, in my heart. I'm a person who's very passionate with what I do. Okay. And uh, for me, uh, what my purpose in politics today is really to make a positive difference in a person's life. And I think, uh, if, if I can make a small difference in a person's life uh, by just simply listening and giving 30 seconds of my time to that person, uh, I think that's what my purpose is and that's what drives me. And so that's my motivation in politics okay. and I continue to uh, serve and do whatever I can to help okay. our people. So since your father has already uh, inspired you at your very young age to stand on the platform and be a speaker, you no, know, one way, so uh, do you ever expect that uh, you would become the chief minister? Uh, well, of course, uh, we uh, as politicians, we do have different thoughts in our mind mm. uh, to be able to serve uh, the people in different positions. Yes. But uh, to be very, very frank with you, uh, I never thought that uh, I would be uh, chief minister in 2018. Mm. Uh, I remember still uh, with late Dr. Don Cooper Roy, we were sitting in that room and um, you know he had specifically uh, mentioned and put this that condition I should say yes. and it was a very difficult situation for me because uh, at that point I had not contested the elections mm -hmm. and we had our MLAs so it's not very simple for us to push that but uh, you know the circumstances were such where I had to come in 
and uh, and I took up that responsibility, and uh, I tried to do the best I could, um, and I'll continue to uh, do whatever I can to help our people, uh, and will serve in whatever way, in whatever you know position that is there. Uh, I'll try to serve the state and the country as a whole. Okay, that's very nice for you taking up as the leader of the MDA government and to be the chief minister. It's really a great burden upon your shoulder, but I think till now you have shouldered it properly Thank till you. the present day. Thank you. บัชวันนังเนะนะกิเวกิเวกิชนองบัดกิดอนกินบัสเตรุเกวากิบวันเทลองกินิกิโลคาลจงิฮีกิลองกิบะเคฮีเดกิตรายกิบะเคฮีเ
Yaka confidence jangi iwe pe iwe tanga ai kuble shibun e yaka still government baka wanra e kenika yas mingalia hapo kajala jangi Ang ibimangan pujibat si S Marakwa, dike ang jerogre maklapo secretary ni kamko ka e yet singi klapko redelinga. Dike tunga yet singi klapo kusungo cleaning drive ramko mata two days sa kimi na yah environment protection conservation program ko ba tunga matahan dingka matcha dike government of Meghalaya ko tunga jerogre maklap ni kita namen metal bia. Ang ibimukon buksan si mo nunga ang jibo patra klap ni sa sa dalgo bangi tunga si mo mo kaba yes Meghalaya ni. Kau mesti nak kerjaska. Kebal kalau tanya aku, aku kerja kalau tanya aku tak nak dah. Jangan yang cuci cuci mata. Ya, skip kau mata nienda. Kau perlu ambil kalau aku angin kis katung kau cuci. Tiada. Just come to your personal life. So we have seen that you have a very good hobby. Now, would you please tell us about your hobby or hobbies as such as we've always seen you, you know, playing guitar or taking a recreation somewhat, somehow. So would you like to at least give us... I think everybody just... has their own uh, passions and uh, their own hobbies. Uh, and I think it's important in life. Yes. Uh, I think this is what keeps us going um, keeps us busy and uh, maybe gives us time to really uh, use our talent or energy in uh, in the right way yes. you know and I always encourage people uh, and you must have seen that even the government programs we have we have many programs where we really push our youth to take up music you know yes. so be it the Meghalaya grassroots music program mm, that's, that's uh, you know idea. and whether it's a yes Meghalaya program mm. we are telling the youth if you like something if you're passionate about something whether it's music or whether it's social issues whether it's sports mm. please do it and we will support you so I believe in that and therefore I also practice what I preach yeah. <laughs> and uh, therefore music is something that uh, I enjoy and uh, whenever I get a chance, which I don't get much, yes. uh, whenever I get a chance, uh, after, of course, I've completed my duties and my responsibilities, I do take some time out for music and I keep uh, practicing. It started at a very young age uh, with uh, my elder brother and our friends. We used to have a band together and we used to perform. And uh, I guess uh, most of the uh, uh, people in Shillong will relate to those kind of music, this, the the rock uh, i do sometimes oh. not not very often uh, as people would say that we face the music more yes. now in this uh, in the position that we are in mm. but uh, but whenever we get a chance um, i i believe that it's good thing to have uh, music or sports or any other hobby mm. and i encourage the youth that it is important to do that because in today's world there are too many distractions yes. and the youth are uh, you know having so many situations to handle be it drugs issue be it social media you know be it peer pressure yes. and i strongly feel that uh, that music and sports uh, are positive things that can then uh, you know really uh, take our youth uh, in the right direction mm. rather than going in the wrong direction okay okay then who is your mentor when you have grown up till this age to become the leader of the party and also to govern the whole state who is your mentor sir i think there's not much uh, thinking about that uh, it's definitely my late father okay. and uh, he has been uh, you know the main mentor and uh, a person i've always looked up to a person who's trained me mm. in uh, in all aspects so definitely it's him and um, you know he's uh, as i said even though he's not here today with us uh, his words still uh, you know echo in my mind uh, you know and in my heart and whenever I'm doing something, uh, it almost uh, feels like he's right there uh, guiding me and telling me what you should do. So uh, it's very, very uh, clear that, uh, of course, he has been my main mentor and my teacher and my guide. Mm -hmm. And as I said, until today, uh, I look up to him and uh, really, you know, uh, uh, follow in his footsteps. The one who can really bring up the children in the right way, you know, as the proverb also says, if you teach the child in the right way from the time when he's small, he will never go in the wrong way when Absolutely. he's grown up. No, Absolutely. That's correct about your father also has yes. taken this seriously. So sir, 
to wind up this uh, Walk the Talk show with us in this New Year plan. What do you have and what is the message <laughs> that you have for the people? Uh, well, yes, uh, everybody, everybody has a New Year's uh, resolution, as they call it. Uh, for me, really, uh, I don't want to complicate too many things. I don't try to come up with certain tasks or, uh, or anything like that. Uh, I think for me, it's very plain and simple. Uh, I just want to do uh, you know, things in a better way. I just want to uh, ensure that I improve myself as a person uh, in small ways. You know? it's, it's not about doing big things, uh, but even the small things that you can do, uh, just being more kind to people, just being more uh, you know, passionate and uh, compassionate and being able to help. I think these small, small things matter. Try to ensure that you become uh, better in, um, as a person in terms of not losing your temper too much. Yes. Uh, because the pressure that is there on us, sometimes we tend yes. to get angry uh, and lose our cool. So I think it's uh, more of that from my personal side. Uh, but yes, of course, I think everybody will have their own goals their own targets and uh, I feel it's a it's a good way to really uh, set certain goals for yourself to 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 improve and um, I would encourage especially our youth that let them take up something uh, positive and let them do something good and I, I think uh, if I can urge our especially our uh, youngsters mm -hmm. and the public in general that uh, uh, there are a few things that are very crucial uh, for uh, for us and uh, I think uh, we can start off with just individuals. I think everybody can be more kind and more compassionate. There is uh, nothing that can affect a person in a nice manner uh, than just a simple smile that you have. So I would urge everybody, let's be in this festive and Christmas season. Let us be more compassionate. Let us be more kind yes. and let us help, you know, another uh, member, another family who needs the help. There's always somebody who's there below us or not as fortunate as us, we can make a difference by doing small things in their life. Second, I would like to urge our youth especially that today's world, we have a huge problem as you mentioned about drugs. Yes. It'll be great if the youth themselves can come up and say that I will use my energy for the right thing. I will do positive things and I will not be distracted by the negative things. Let's say no to drugs. Third thing which I would like to mention is what we could do as individuals about our environment. And I think climate change is a major issue. I think if we can do small things as a society, as an individual, I think it could make a big difference. So if we can do something for the environment uh, in this particular year uh, by simple things, by reducing what we consume, by reusing what we are able to reuse or recycling what we can. These are simple ways in which we can help. So. I leave it to individuals, but these are three, four things which I thought that if every citizen of our state could take up, I think it would lead to a huge exponential difference uh, in the impact we have for the people of our state. Okay, well, thank you very much, sir. That was great talking to you. And I hope people who are watching this program of ours, Work the Talk, will be really uh, enthusiastic to do something for the betterment of the state, for the environment as well, and especially for themselves as individuals. So let us all wish everyone from PCN a very, very happy new year. Happy new year to you, sir. Merry Christmas yeah, and happy new year. Yes. Thank you so much. Ngangat barok na pigi paralok ki bapent ikinik program Walk the Talk Show. Menta ke chan meet, ringkat bat u menteri rang ba jungi u konrat ke sangma. Pilaya sengau dalam kijong kishkor Ya ki ai ki ba ka ne ka sorkar hapo ka jing alam ka jong u ke lala ban le hakin ki snap ki ba ka don hak bor sensa nya ke ru ba phila sung thu ya ki ai ki thong ba ka ne ka sorkar ka lala ban pendem dengi khmi lnti ba nang ne shakmat ngin sa yo ya ki jing ba ngin sa yo i ru ya ki jing rai ba ka jing ke sha phrang jong ka jelahi Baru kawai ni kemilan tiru, bat ni angnut, bahapo kencing alam jong ni umentri rampa ni salak banyu, ia kencing roy kencing par, bat kencing kiu irat hakik babuan kian hakik nak jelahi baru kawai. Dengan ni, bahkan ni kalong ke program ke bahkan pang ke bahmani na opet ni cable news ni wanra shapi mentah ke jamni ni aku playu Islam mai ke bahsuk bat ke bahkemen ke badap jengkel ku ia pi baru ke paralok. Di bawah ya kita ke program jangi sasi sin, kubla ishbon, senam kumai, pasuk ya kita baru.